So I'm excited today to bring to you an epic video that I think is going to showcase what 2022 and what 2023 will bring us in the world of gaming monitors. And that's right, you heard me. This is going to be the Samsung G70A versus the LG GQ950. So today is going to be pretty straightforward. I've got two monitors side by side. I'm going to showcase some of the things that I think are good. We're going to compare both of my benchmark and testing videos, full length reviews available on the channel. So subscribe so you can see more and support the channel. And that's how I keep things going by viewers just like you. We're first just going to go through some comparisons. Then we're going to get into some actual gameplay and showcasing which one is better. They're both G-Sync. That's fantastic. They're both 4K. They're both HDMI 2.1. They both have full array dimming. They both have back RGB lighting and front for the Samsung only. The Samsung, of course, is a 28 inch while the LG there sits at a staggering 32 inches. Unique in their design, they both feature some pretty cool looks. And for the most part, they both have the same features. While the Samsung has a few more desk variety style features when it comes to pan and rotation, neither one disappoints. And at 32 inches, you're probably not moving that LG far anyways. Now, the one benefit that LG does have over the Samsung is there is a speaker built in while the Samsung only has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, during calibration, they both hit very similar marks. The LG does eke out a win with 100% sRGB compared to the 99% of the Samsung. And then the DCI-P3, there's a big, big difference, 88% from the Samsung while the LG has 98%. It's a pretty big difference and something worthwhile to look at. And then last but not least, when it comes to comparing these two, as far as color, calibration, things like that, the LG is quite a bit brighter. It's 450 peak nits of brightness and the Samsung is only 400. Now, both of these monitors use a full array dimming panel and I think it serves both of them well. However, I do believe that LG does it better. Case in point, our gray uniformity here. If you look to the right, you'll see the LG is a lot more uniform. That gray is very clear. There's no like, there's not a lot of uneven gray or darker spots. It's a very, very clean. Now I put both of these monitors in my own custom calibration that I did through Spider X. So I know that they are as accurate when it comes to color as possible. And then I turn their brightness up to 100% on both. So we can see them at their brightest possible capability. And side by side, I have to tell you that this LG definitely has a richer color, like the purples here. These purples are amazing. So we're just seeing a very vivid and nice and clean color over on the right hand side. Not that the Samsung is bad, but that richness, the deepness of the blue, like down here in this area, and orange is looking extremely good. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better showing. Both are kind of blowing out a little bit of detail here. The white striations in that pink blob, yeah, they're a little bright but I think the LG is actually handling that better and not turning this into one just solid pink mass. You can see there's a good gradient between the pink on that LG than there is on the Samsung. And just to put this to rest, again, the purple on the right hand side with that LG, these little pearls down here, it's just got that deeper or more rich purple that you don't see on the Samsung. So that's leading me to believe that that lighting panel, that capability, that extra accuracy in color, that nano cell technology is really giving the LG the edge here. 
Well, it's not all about color. It's not all about brightness. Sometimes other things matter more. And that's why I want to test using the UFO test that I've done in the past for both monitors off of our UFO test, testing regular motion out of the box. You know, it does look like the LG is coming in a bit stronger. That first pause we have, there is some overshoot. Some overshoot for the Samsung, not the LG. The LG actually has no artifacting. No overshoot, no ghosting. And you know, quite frankly, it seems to win in the world motion blur testing as well. Just looking at this, seeing these side by side, I'm looking at that picture from the LG and there definitely is some ghosting on that bottom frame, but it seems like at lower frames per second, just like the last test we did, this LG actually performs a bit better. And that's probably because it has an extended capability for your variable refresh rate. And then you have the whole misstep with Samsung's response time where you have to turn off adaptive sync in order to get the response time to open up. And then you have to put the adaptive sync back on and lock it into place just to get the exact setting you want. With LG, you don't have to do that. And in fact, it actually gives one extra setting for response time than Samsung does. So you get four with LG off normal, fast and faster. With Samsung, you get three, technically. You get standard, fast, and extreme. And of course, they both do the MPRT, motion picture response rate, or response time, sorry, where they do a strobe effect. And I don't like that strobe effect. It, it never really does it for me, although I tested both of them in the full review. So if you wanna check that out, go check out the full reviews. I'll link them down below. Okay, and at their lowest setting, you know, Samsung seems to be actually holding up better. Overall, it has a little bit less ghosting um, and not quite the presence of overshoot that LG does. And then on the next setting up for the both of them, it kind of looks like Samsung's winning in the synthetic bench. The LG is a mess over here. There is just image blur and all sorts of funky stuff happening on the LG right now with this setting. So yeah, this bodes well for Samsung. But things start to fall apart with Samsung once you get up into those higher, the faster response times. It doesn't actually pan out. It's not any better than the original or the second setting. I mean, you have ghosting in this and you have overshoot in this in every frame with the Samsung. While the LG kind of cleaned up its act a little bit. It's not a lot. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as the previous frame, but it's about on par with Samsung. So let's see what the best setting does for the LG. This could mean the LG overall might eke out a win because it's got one extra setting that the Samsung doesn't have. Now, synthetic benchmarks are more of an exact than they are of a real world scenario. It's a controlled test on the monitor given a specific variable and in real world gaming may not actually mean anything. And the reason I say that is LG does actually prove to be about as reliable in this test as Samsung. I feel like it's a wash. Samsung did better early on at the lower response rates while LG gets better, not by a lot, in its fastest response rate. But the fact that LG even offers that extra bit here means you can finally tune your display to your preferences, your gameplay, your frame rate, your GPU, your setup, your eyes, all of that. It just gives you that one extra little bit that really makes you love the monitor that much more. All right, for this next bit, what we're gonna be doing is firing up the PS5 because it's not all about synthetic benchmarks and not all about motion handling. One of the most important differences between the two is not only the brightness, but it's the HDR factor. LG with their Nano IPS claims, well, they don't just claim, they actually prove that they have a VESA certified HDR 1000 panel with 450 peak nits of brightness. We wanna prove that the LG is better or inversely, we wanna prove that Samsung still has something to play with, especially given it's only 400 peak nits of brightness. So this is the peripheral, great Amazon original and quite frankly, a dark show when in certain scenarios. these scenarios here, you can't really see a whole lot of detail coming through. 
I would actually say, in my opinion, in this particular scene, given these scenarios, the Samsung's doing a better job right now. You know, and with this LG HDR on, what I'm noticing is there's actually a lot of backlight bleed, more than I've noticed in the past. Now, I'm not saying the Samsung is gonna do better. In fact, let's pause and take a look. Let me get a side angle. You know, here's the deal. I actually think the Samsung looks a little bit better in these dark areas, these black detail oriented movies where there's a lot of, lot of dark scenes. Now it doesn't mean it's overall brighter or it's contrast is better or it's color accuracy is better, but what Samsung does allow you to do, they allow a very good calibration. It's not the best. It's not like the gigabyte, M28U, but it allows a good calibration and multiple different HDR modes, standard and like vivid. And then I can go in, I can adjust the brightness, contrast, color, black level performance. That's my biggest complaint about this LG GP950. Sorry, GQ950. It's actually quite nice when there's some color introduced to the display. When it's bright, it really pops but when it's dark, you have no advanced calibration menu. So in scenes like this, I can't change much else other than brightness and sharpness. And that's one of the biggest downsides. But let's find something that's a little bit brighter. Now pay attention to this scene because here in this movie, James Bond, No Time to Die, there's a good amount of detail However, the LG is not outperforming, at least in its HDR capability, it is not outperforming the Samsung. Because of the lack of controls and calibration, sure, it might get brighter. It, well, it in fact does, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't actually control the parameters of that brightness. If you can't control the color, if you can't control the contrast, if you can't control the RGB, None of it really matters. To prove my point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and turn HDR off real quick. Now you can see with HDR off, the picture actually crushes less detail. It's still a bit dark, uh, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. I can calibrate a lot of that out. And you can see with HDR off, we're getting a lot more detail in those shadow areas. Samsung kind of has that same level of darkness in the shadow details. I'll cut this up a bit so you can see side by side on both of them, but I do think, I think they're both better in SDR, but if you're comparing the HDRs between them, I take Samsung's over LG's in this particular test only because there's no calibration capability in the LG. I think they both actually did extremely well. And in order to know which one is actually better, we gotta play some video games here. So let me fire up a little bit of Modern Warfare 2. Let's jump in, do a couple of rounds, take away what we will with it. You guys can help me make that decision at the end of the video. So let's jump in. Oh buddy, I'm just jumping right in here. Woo! Getting slapped. Woo! Let me do a bit of testing here.
Headshot, baby! This just feels amazing. Did you see how clean that was? That was super clean, you guys. Oh, you're going to camp up in the corner. Come on, baby. Damn. <laughs> Dude, nobody's going to shoot that thing down. Come on. No chance, baby. Ah! <laughs> All right, let's go. One last fast paced interaction, you guys. Woo wee! All right. Killing it, bro. Well, that's it for testing, you guys. Listen, I could go side by side all day with two different monitors and read off the specs and the performance and their peak nits of brightness and all their different calibration menus and get into the like nitty gritty, but quite frankly, that's not that exciting. When it comes to color, clarity, contrast, it's close, but the LG definitely ekes out a win here. It beats out with all those deep, rich, dark colors and very, very good IPS, nano IPS display, just pulls out all that detail you wanna see. However, when it came to HDR, you know, the LG kind of got left in the dust and it's because of those calibration menus. So LG, if you're listening, expand the menus, allow us to calibrate a little bit further so we can get the most performance we, we want out of this monitor. When you look at the synthetic benchmarks, the pixel response rate, motion blur testing, the LG wins. Now, what about real world gameplay? When we were playing a little bit of Modern Warfare 2, this is really my opinion, you guys. I'm not gonna cut it up and try to benchmark this. My opinion was the Samsung felt slow and spongy. It was, it was like moving through lava compared to using the LG. That is a massive exaggeration. It was a fraction of a second but everything with the LG clicked. It matched those synthetic benchmarks where having that better control over the pixel response rate and that extended variable refresh rate, I don't know if it really used those things to its fullest capability, but for whatever reason, it felt better in Modern Warfare, which I believe is a very FPS heavy game. So going back to the beginning of the video, almost every other aspect about these two are very similar. They're almost identical. And that leads me to tell you that yes, the LG is a better monitor, hands down, but at its regular retail price of like $1,300, can I really recommend it over the G7EA? And the answer is probably not, not for most people. Now, if you're just looking for the best and that's what you want, then yeah, I agree, the LG is a better monitor. However, I am going to be doing a video on a monitor that I think actually outperforms both, at least in my testing so far, not in every scenario. So subscribe to the channel so you can see that video when it drops. It's coming real soon, you guys. So don't miss it. Well, I appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you want to check out other videos like this one, then I'm going to put a link up above. It's a little card. Click that. It's going to take you to all the other videos about 4K versus videos, that sort of thing. All right, you guys, I'll catch you in the next video.